Hey guys, on today's episode, we're working on a 1991 GMC Cyclone. Now this has 278 original miles, but the catch is the paint is razor thin. So today we're gonna be going with a step-by-step -step process for polishing really, really thin paint without burning through. Today on Drive for Tech. The GMC Cyclone is a souped up version of the Sonoma pickup truck and in 1991, this was the fastest production truck in the world with zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds and the quarter mile in just 13.4 seconds at 98 miles an hour. Now this thing is powered by a 4.3 liter V6 with a Mitsubishi turbocharger producing 280 horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque. Out of the 2,998 ever produced, only three were actually made in 1992 before they canceled production. That same year, GMC produced the Typhoon SUV based on the GMC Jimmy platform, which weighed 300 pounds more and had nearly double the production numbers than that of the Cyclone, making this truck here highly desirable. When I see lots of tight swirls on thin black paint, my gut tells me this is gonna be very, very soft paint as the micro marring is likely due to just years of wiping while it was in storage or on display. See this dude? Three, three mil. 1.85 yard. Oh. Well, today's lesson is gonna be on how to polish paint that doesn't exist. Before we get too deep into the process, step one is just to simply wash the truck to remove any contamination and to see how the water reacts to the paint from the power washer, indicating either some level of protection or not that I may need to work through during the polishing phase. In the foam cannon, I'm using Ammo Foam Plus Boost to increase its lubrication. Now, obviously, when you suspect super soft paint on a car like this one here, you're kind of forced to only touch the paint under extreme lubrication conditions. Unlike, let's say, a Mercedes from the early 2000s that had way harder paint, you can wipe that one way more frequently and you can wipe it at shows, etc. And it's not going to mar as easily as this one does. With the paint now soaking, I work the turbine style 16 inch aluminum wheels with Ammo Brute wheel soap, a two tier wheel brush, and a microfiber towel. With less than 300 miles, obviously they're not very dirty, but we wanted to clean them prior to polishing and then coating later on. Next, I unbuttoned the bed cover, power washed the dirt, then used Frothy as a lubricant to scoop up the light dust with a microfiber towel, then used the blower to dry the area. Ooh, that's dirty. It spools up. For the engine, I lightly rinsed with water, then misted frothy from the aerator once again, just to remove any dust or light grease that was added for the Bring a Trailer pictures last year, then wiped with a microfiber towel. Now, normally I use compressed air triggers just to blow out the trapped water, but they can be overly aggressive, sometimes blowing off badges or sensitive paint, whatever, and sometimes forcing water into places it shouldn't go. So not always the best thing to do. So lately I've been using my Metrovac Master Blaster because the stream of air is just not so violent, especially on incredibly rare cars like this one. So this is why we do uh, what we do here. Because I was using the air and I wasn't using compressed air, I hit something back here and all of a sudden, all these little, little uh, I think chewed up egg corns or something are back there where you can't see it. This is when this becomes really helpful. So keep an eye on this. I'm gonna put this back on. I'll start blowing and you'll see things come out. And that's the only way we're, we're gonna be able to get it. If you use water, obviously we could potentially over soak it, but this is where this comes in handy. You would never have seen it. I can see it right in there. You see that little, like little egg corns and stuff? To 
to dry the paint, I did the same exact thing just to avoid using compressed air and having issues associated with that. In this case, I used both of the four horsepower motors producing about 540 mile an hour warm dry air along with a microfiber towel to quickly dry everything up before I start my polishing process. Now, the cool thing is if you're unsure about the paint and how if it might blow something off, you can kick one of those motors down and just use four instead of the eight horsepower. So basically cutting it in half. And for me, I used both of them because I felt pretty confident. It took me about eight to 10 minutes and the entire truck was dry. Just a quick heads up, when I did my spring cleaning video on my wife's Subaru a few weeks ago, I pulled out my old Master Blaster from, I don't even know how long I've had that thing. It, they last forever, but the point is I wanted to demonstrate a less expensive, easier alternative to compressed air. A lot of you have asked about that. This is the one that I use in my driveway before I built the Ammo Studio. After that video aired, Metrovac was so pumped, they sent me their latest version of the Master Blaster. Now this thing is all hand manufactured in the USA, and they are now a sponsor of the show by offering everyone a 10% discount on all products found at Metrovac.com, including the car and motorcycle dryer, vacuums, pet dryers, and DataVac electric duster. Use promo code AMMO at checkout for 10% off. With the paint now dry and her up on the lift to save my back during polishing, I added some masking tape to the matte black trim to avoid any bumps during polishing. Again, not every car needs tape, but this thing being a thin skinned unicorn, I'm playing it extra safe. For my test panel, I'm using a one pad, one polish process, and the before and after is significantly better without removing too much paint in the process. Okay, after my 50-50 on the hood, you can see that there is tons of paint residue coming off. In this case, it's single stage paint. The paint is black, this pad was white, and now it's black. So we're getting a ton of residue and the paint is very thin. So what that means is the reason that there's so many swirls in there is it's very soft paint. So we have thin paint plus we have soft paint, that equals danger. So the way that I'm sort of getting around that or mitigating that is I'm using a straight edge pad. Now, if you can see right here, it's very, very flat. Now, if I take a normal flared pad, you can see it fly up here. Now, the reason that we do this, we mentioned this in a video with Kevin Brown years ago when we were working on Matt Farris Countach. And the reason why is the edges are very sensitive. And if I put this down here, now if the pad backing plate is right here, you can see this flares out and it flops around. And this can be good to get into tight areas occasionally when you're trying to work on paint that maybe is a little bit stronger, but when you're on very thin paint that's soft, this will flap around and might hit an edge and burn it. So what we do here is now that this is nice and straight, you can get into tight areas and it's not gonna flap over or spin out and kind of burn off an edge. So that's the reason why we do that. Plus I'm using a long cycle polish. The combination of the two is allowing me to do a one step polish on this keep as much paint as possible. And you can see the depth and clarity came back. Most of the scratches are out. But the key to this whole thing is being okay with 85 to 90%. If you go from 90 to 100, you can cause some damage. And that spread between 90 and 100 is not worth the risk. All right, here's why I love working on really soft paint. One, when you're done, it comes out, looks absolutely fantastic. Now the downside of super soft paint is it obviously scratches really easy. So what we're doing is a two-step technique. The first one you may have noticed, I use my arm speed much faster than the second one. It's what we call a mow down. The idea is just kind of grind off, metaphorically speaking, all the dead skin, all the stuff that's been on there for years. Then I take the pad, blow out the pad. The reason we blow out the pad at that step is if you don't do that, all the residue, all the dead skin, sticks to that pad. Now it's in there, right? These little spikes are in there that you just got out and now you're grinding the paint with it. And that's why it's really hard to get soft paint to be swirl free. That's kind of the trick. So after I blow it all out, I put a little bit of ring of polish back on there and then I'll go very slow. Now I'm polishing the paint. I'm not polishing the dead skin that's on top. I'm polishing the beautiful paint that's underneath. And it'll give your pad a little bit of time to breathe as well. Cause you're blowing out that residue. You're not just keep scouring the paint. That's the trick when you're working on super thin, super soft paint. You have to use two steps and make sure that you're managing that residue that's coming off. Scoop it up, blow it out, and then continue on. It's best to rotate two to three pads per car, especially when using the one pad, one polish technique. Eventually the pad becomes saturated with residue and needs to be cleaned. To do that, use Titan 12 degreaser, a little bit of warm water, and then gentle massaging of the foam to release the paint residue buildup. 
Look how quickly the foam has gone from black to white. Now, once everything is clean, blow it out with air or use a microfiber towel or simply just let it sit there and air dry while you use a new pad. The next day, Renan arrived to help me finish up the truck by working the one inch Rupes Nano on the tight spots, the door jams, and under the hood while I was polishing the wheels with a three inch machine and a foam pad. Nossa, que ficou? Ficou limpinho, viu? Next, I quickly iso prepped the paint. Then we added Reflex Pro to protect the insanely sensitive paint and minimize marring during the next wash. With the door jams as thin as they were when I tested them, it was important to coat them as well. Now, when it comes to the trim, because it's lightly matted, not fully matted, we decided to use Reflex Pro instead of Frame Pro to avoid having it super shiny. That, that would obviously defeat the matte design aesthetics. Again, when we finished, it looked a thousand times better, but it wasn't super shiny. It was more rich or deep, which is what we were going for. For the wheels, Renan added Gelee Pro while I cleaned the interior very quickly. Obviously, when you're working on an interior that still has the plastic from the original day that the car was purchased, you're not going to be doing a whole lot. So in this case, I'm going to be taking the towel, fold it into fours, spray your cleaner, in this case lather, a few squirts, rub it in, and that's all we're really doing is just removing the dust. Oh, there is a bit of dust here, but I'm not going to be scrubbing anything down. Now, the reason I do that on very special rare cars, you can smell the interior. It's still brand new and it has that new car scent kind of thing going on so to, to mask that in a cleaner just doesn't make any sense the gentleman who purchased this wants to feel that original smell and, and touch so we don't really have to do a whole lot in here except wipe it down should be good to go lastly Renan vacuumed I cleaned the windows with obey cleaner and a squeegee <laughs> then added tire dressing before we reinstalled the rear cover with the hundred buttons that of course didn't want to cooperate this is why having a boat suck then we added mousse moisturizer to the cover to add some UV protection when he goes for a drive. On next week's episode, we restore a half a million dollar one of one Group B Rally RS 200S in black. Absolutely insane rally car. Make sure you subscribe to watch all of our latest details. As always, thanks for watching and see you next week.